This is why scripture tells us in Galatians 5 verses 16 and 17. I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do things that you wish. Let's use the example of drugs. Drugs are about tasting and feeling and sensing something that your soul begins to emotionally enjoy. And the spirit rejects, but if you do it enough times, it gets downloaded. And now when you wanna quit doing drugs, your problem is it's stuck on your hard drive. So you get saved and saved and saved but never get a clean hard drive. You go up to that altar every time they have an altar call to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but yet your hard drive is still dirty. Your salvation wasn't the issue. Your hard drive is. Your soul is the issue. Getting it cleaned up of all the junk that you've been downloading onto it for all of these years. We can break this stronghold, but the only way to be completely free from any habit is having a replacement of habits. Like we can kick a habit, but we, it has to be replaced with something else or else the enemy is able to come back and see, hey, do you want this again? And you didn't replace it with a new way of thinking, a new mindset, a new habit, and he's able to bring it right back in. You have to download new information, a new way of thinking, a new way of seeing things. A stronghold is an area in which we are being held in bondage due to a limited mindset or a twisted belief system. Renewing the mind is more than just learning something. It's changing. You can change. Romans 12 verse two tells us, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We are to be transformed and changed into someone new. We will no longer look like the world. Our thoughts and our ways are not God's thoughts and God's ways. Isaiah 55 verse eight tells us, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. We can change through the word of God to become more like him, to start thinking more like him, responding more like him, feeling the way that he wants us to feel. This is going to require change. Transformed in Romans 2 verse 2 is the Greek word metamorpho which means to change or transform in like and kind. God gave us such a great example of this um, when we see a caterpillar to a beautiful butterfly. The metamorpho that took place, the change that took place, the transformation that took place from this, this caterpillar in a cocoon into this beautiful butterfly. The word is how we learn to think like God. The word is how we are transformed. Ephesians 4 verse 13 tells us, we are to come to the knowledge of God, to the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. So how do we do this? Our thoughts always lead our actions. We have to think something before we move on that thought. Proverbs 23 verse seven tells us, as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. If we change our thoughts, we change everything else in our life. Everything. No situation stays the same. When we get our thoughts aligned with God's word, and this is now our truth, our entire lives will change. But we must learn to control our thoughts. We have to choose before our feet hit the ground every morning that we will forgive before we're even offended. That I'm not going to hold nothing against it because offense is going to come every single day. There's going to be an opportunity to be offended. You need to choose before your feet ever even hit that ground. I'm not going to be offended today. I'm going to quickly forgive every single person, every single opportunity that somebody had to offend me. I'm going to quickly forgive them. We choose 
The choice is to walk in love every single day before your feet even hit the ground and to run to God at all times about all things on every occasion, not just when we need him. When we run to God just because we're in a tough spot, it actually means that we don't want a Lord. We just want a genie in a bottle at that time. Like, I don't want you to be Lord of my life. I only want the help when I'm in the tough spot because other than that, I've got this. So you don't want a Lord. You want a genie in a bottle and that's not what God is. Ephesians 4 verse 17 through 24 says, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness that is in their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness, to walk in uncleanliness and greediness. But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former con conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to, to the deceitful lust and being renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in the true righteousness and holiness. This teaches us that we are not to live our lives like we did as unbelievers in the fertility of our minds. That means that we are not to continue to think and walk and do things the way that we used to do them. It goes on to say that we are to put on the new man by renewing our mind in true righteousness and holiness. When we change our thoughts, everything changes. <music>